Welcome, I'm Sayer, and this is Artisan Heirloom Foods. Today we'll be making Oklahoma curry chicken style pilaf. So this is my ingredient list. As you can see, I have some chicken stock, some whole grain rice. I have uh, pre-minced garlic. I always find that easy to, uh, to use. As well as some spices such as ground turmeric and curry powder. This is what's going to make it um, a curry style dish. I also have three chicken breasts. Uh, I prefer the breasts over the uh, dark meat in this recipe. As well as two onions, one medium, which is here, as well as a large one. And then fr fresh from my garden, I have some garlic chives. Uh, I'll talk about those in a minute as well as some asparagus and I just harvested both of these probably about 15-20 minutes before this video so they're very fresh so the first thing that you want to do is um, or what I like to do is prep everything first get everything cut and ready to go and um, it just makes life so much easier um, it's you know allows you to be a little bit more organized so uh, look at the top of this asparagus it's beautiful and then as you notice I cut everything on the diagonal so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, mince up the chop up the garlic chives garlic chives are really unique because they're not like a typical chive um, they're not um, hollow in the center as you saw there, they, they're kind of like a blade of grass. They have this really intense garlic onion flavor. So it's really, it's, they're just, it's like a, it's like taking a mouthful of garlic and onion all at once. It's just, they're very potent, very flavorful. You can use them fresh in uh, your dishes as well as um, incorporate them into the recipe and cook them into your dish. And then of course, if you cook them, they're gonna release um, all of their garlicky, oniony flavor into whatever it is that you're cooking. So, you know, if you haven't tried them, I would give them a try, they're really good. And I've been growing them for about, oh, probably about seven or eight years. They, I don't have to replant them. They're a perennial. And they just come back every single year. Um, and every year they get bigger and, and fuller. And um, so I have a whole garden bed dedicated to them. So, um, so I'm done here. And as you can see, they're nicely, you know, chopped up perfect size for our dish they're gonna add a lot of flavor they're not really meant for in this dish for the color just for the flavor so then we're gonna uh, chop up the onion and there's several ways you can do this but um, today I'm just going to be cutting both ends off normally I only cut the one end uh, and keep the root end on uh, but I'm gonna do a large medium to large dice uh, today so uh, I don't have to be precise um, it's easier if you're gonna do smaller dice to leave the root end on um, but not today you know onions are probably my least favorite thing to prep because of the skins the skins are sometimes difficult to get off and um, they just stick to everything as you can see they just stick everywhere so uh, but you know they're they're probably one of the most important ingredients when cooking because they impart lots of flavor to your dishes. So, and they change. Uh, the more you cook them, uh, the more the sugars caramelize and uh, they become sweeter. So, uh, I'm just going to here just chop them up. Now, as I said earlier, um, I'm gonna do a medium to large dice so, uh, you know, I'm not going to cut them fine. And as you can see there, I mean, they're squared off. And um, they're really going to, you know, add a good dimension to this uh, chicken curry pilaf. 
uh, the rice is going to absorb the flavor, the chicken's going to absorb the flavor. It's all going to be really nice together. And like I said, almost everything that you cook, you got to have onions in it. So, uh, but we're going to go ahead and cut the chicken up here. And I have three chicken breasts. Now you can rinse them off if you want. Um, you can use, you know, pretty much whatever brand you want. It doesn't matter. You just need three good sized chicken breasts. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to slice them up and, um, and then cube them into probably, you know, about medium sized cubes. Um, this is plenty. There are three of us in our family, and this will actually feed probably, uh, in total, probably about four, a family of four with leftovers. So, um, here I'll show you in just a second the size, so that way you can kind of get an idea um, of how large to cut them. Some are going to be smaller, like this one. This one's a little smaller and kind of, you know, longer shaped, but that's okay. But this is what we're going for. So. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of these up and get cooking. So, the first thing that we're gonna to add to the pot is olive oil. I always use olive oil probably 98% of the time. I don't ever use any other kind of oils. Um, it's just a, a really good go-to oil. I'm gonna add uh, two pats of butter. Uh, so it's probably about two tablespoons. Milk that in, and then we're gonna add the chicken. Now what we want to do here is we 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 kind of want to lightly brown one side of the chicken, and um, I'm all about layers. Uh, you know, it's when you're cooking, always think in terms of layers of you know flavor, and, and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add several fresh ingredients to the chicken and cook it all together. First, I'm going to add the salt. Um, use kosher salt, not table salt. Um, it's it's just a it's it's a better salt. Uh, if you use uh, table salt, you have to use less. I'm going to add some ground pepper, and I'm going to add my spices, my curry, and my turmeric. Make sure you shake the uh, jars first. If not, you could get a big clump that comes in. And we're not putting, we're just lightly covering the chicken. Like I said just a few seconds ago, it's all about layering your flavors. And so we wanna, the chicken breast have, has really, it's really plain it's, and, and flavorless. It doesn't really have very much flavor. So you wanna get that flavor onto the chicken and cook it onto the chicken. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, the onions and the garlic chives over it. Now typically you would cook the chicken off first. Here we're going to add some uh, garlic um, just as an additional layer, an in-between layer. And um, it's not going to overcook or burn because if you see the pot, the chicken, uh, the pan, the chicken is releasing lots of its juices into the oil. So we're gonna add the, uh, again, we're gonna add the onion and the chives and we're just gonna layer it on top. And um, what's what this is gonna do is that the onions are going to release their juices in uh, above the chicken and, and down into the oil. And as the chicken cooks, the chicken will absorb that onion flavor as well as the garlic flavor. And to help do this, we're going to add a little bit more salt. Don't worry, this is not going to be too salty because remember we're doing rice here. And rice has absolutely no flavor whatsoever. So you got to add as much flavor to the rice. We're going to add a little pepper. And then we're going to let this cook. And uh, about 10 minutes, 12 minutes goes by here and I'm going to stir it up. And as you can see, some of the chicken 
has been lightly browned. Uh, it's golden brown. But we, we don't want to overly cook the chicken because remember chicken, chicken breast can dry out really easily. So we're going to mix this around and what this is going to do, this is actually going to help the onion. Um, the onions have kind of steamed a little bit and started to break down but once we stir this all in and get the onions onto the pan, the onions with the, with the salt is going to draw the moisture out and now the chicken is going to really start to absorb this and here in a minute you're going to see there's going to be lots of liquid in the um, pot and uh, so here we go we're going to add the rice and as you can see there's lots of liquid there's probably about a half a cup of liquid so in total we need five cups that's two cups of rice so I'm going to add just a half a cup of water uh, and then I'm going to add uh, four cups of chicken broth and so between the juices the water and the chicken broth that's going to give you five cups of liquid and that's going to be plenty for the rice uh, to cook and to get tender and then of course your chicken isn't totally cooked it's still raw in the center so the ju the liquid is actually going to help cook the meat. Uh, this process is going to take probably about 50-55 minutes to complete. So uh, you know just be aware of that. Go ahead and mix uh, the rice in uh, just to evenly get it uh, distributed uh, throughout the pan and you can see that really vibrant yellow color from the turmeric you want to bring this to a boil once you've brought it to a boil you want to turn your stove down your temperature down to a simmer and then you're gonna put a, the lid on it and then you're gonna walk away and come back about mm, 40 minutes later and that this is not something you want to stir uh, this is not a risotto this is you know this is basic rice cooking so just go ahead and put the lid on, turn it down, and walk away. In the meantime, while you're letting that cook, you can prep your other vegetables. If you're going to have them today, I'm having asparagus, and um, I have it in a bowl here. I, um, I add a little uh, olive oil, and of course, you need to layer your flavor, so you're going to put some salt. Um, that looks like a lot of salt, but really it isn't. Um, uh, but you add how much you think you want. And then of course, some pepper. And then we're gonna give this a, a good mix, a good stir, and, and uh, coat all of the asparagus with the oil and uh, salt and pepper. And that way every piece has, uh, you know, is coated and then we're gonna put it in the pan and just kind of spread it out evenly so that way when we put it into the oven it cooks evenly and what we're going to do is we're gonna take a look here at the rice it's been about 40 minutes so as you can see the rice has absorbed now I'm just gonna slightly stir this be very careful, you don't want to smash the rice, uh, you don't want mush, um, I just want to make sure that uh, all you know it's not stuck to the bottom. And I turn the oven off, and now I'm going to give it a little taste here, and um, to see if the rice is uh, cooked, and it's actually almost done. So I want to taste the chicken. Uh, right now we're just checking for flavor you know this is the time in which you know if it's if it needs more salt you can add it so this is what it kind of looks like it's a little uh, moist uh, but what we're gonna do is um, put the lid on take it off or put it off onto the other side of the stove and just let it sit there and let it cook 
in its own heat for the next 10 minutes, uh, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and meanwhile, what we're going to do is we're going to, we've turned the broiler on and we're going to broil our asparagus. And so we're going to put this in the oven and let it cook for about 10 to 12 minutes. And sorry about the dirty stove. I only clean my stove once a year. <laughs> so uh, it's been about 10, 12 minutes. And as you can see, the asparagus has um, browned real nicely, evenly. We're gonna check to see if it's done. And of course it is done. So uh, we're just going to show you what the end result is. And um, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it for you. And uh, if you haven't already, if you're new, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell, the notification bell. And until my next video, all of you take care. Again, thanks for spending your time with me. And um, I hope you come back and watch more videos. All right, you guys. Thanks so much for your time. Take care.